Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where in the world you're tuning in from. Welcome to this session about two plus years of Story Spaces Direct, the good, the bad, and the ugly, here on the S2D Days live stream. I am your presenter for this session. My name is Jan Tode Pedersen. I work as a senior consultant at CT Global here in Norway where I focus on S2D and Hyper-V, system center products, software-defined data center, if it's on-prem or in Azure, and of course, Azure Stack and all other Windows Server-related products. I blog at jtpeterson.com, and you can reach me on Twitter. And recently, I took over the data center part for the System Center user group here in Norway. In this set session, we will cover the following, how S2D has evolved from Ignite 2016 till today, the good, the bad, and the ugly experiences in the last two years. And we will also co cover some simple steps to upgrading your S2D cluster to 2019. Some of you were perhaps at Ignite 2016 in Atlanta and watched Klaus and Cosmos' session about S2D, or perhaps like me, watched it as a recording a month or so later. With the release of Windows Server 2016 in October 2016, Microsoft took the leap into software-defined storage, which at the time was led by Nutanix and VMware and a few smaller vendors. For those of you that deployed S2D in the first few, few months, it might have felt as pioneer work. Not, not a lot of information was out there about setting it up or how others were doing, so you might have str struggled a bit. I know for sure I had a few fr frustrating months in the beginning. Anything from getting switch config correct to patching. Figuring out what kind of hardware one should buy was easy, as there was a limited range of servers being offered through the Windows Server Software Defined Program from the hardware vendors. Today, that is a total opposite. We have a broad range of vendors with a ton of options from SSD, NVMe, plus HDD, to all flash solutions with pure NVMe, NVMe plus SSD, or as in the 29 edition, NVDIM as cache. There has been some major updates to S2D over the last two years, some good and some not so good, which I will be talking about a bit later. If you build a cluster today, I would say your only option is to buy a WSSD certified solution with a certified switch set up. The ready node configurations offered by different vendors should be the way for you to go and will provide a good foundation for your S2D deployments. As people started to use S2D more, we saw at Ignite 2017 some amazing custom adaptations and results. One of these um, is Hollywood's biggest movie trailer maker, create advertising, telling us about their S2D adaptation of a scale-out file server solution with a four node data on S2D 3224 S2D cluster with an attached data on JBOD ch ch chassis with large capacity drives per node. And they were leveraging SMB3 with RDMA between their Windows workstation and the scale-out file server cl cluster, giving them an enormous speed increase and decrease in cost. We are talking six times faster production of trailers and two to four times <coughs> re reduced in hardware costs. In March of 2019, we saw that there was 10,000 deployments of S2D in just 18 months which is amazing. 
In March of 2018, we also got a new single node cluster management tool for Windows servers and S2D with Project Honolulu, later named Windows Admin Center. With a cumulative update in May, giving us a nice S2D GUI in Windows Admin Center. We also at this time started to get a technical preview of Windows Server 2019. With the release of technical pre previews, we're getting so much new stuff to S2D, which is RAFS DDoP. Cluster performance history and disk latency outliers, NVDIM, persistent memory, cluster sets, a record breaking performance of 13.8 million IOPS, max 4 petabytes of storage pool, lightweight quorum USB key or NAS as a witness, the new nested resiliency at true two node mirror, and a few other new features that is really nice pardon my italian and i'm sorry if my pronunciation is wrong il bueno the good il brutto the bad il cattivo the ugly for those that is old enough might recognize the title as a late 60s spaghetti western with clint eastwood as the lead character if you google Wikipedia as a good reference to the movie. As the movie were, movies were made in Europe by Italian filmmaker, and as I am a European, and I'm about to talk to you about the good, the bad, and the ugly, I thought it was fitting to give you some insight into this fantastic genre of movies. Let's start off with the bad stuff. In the movie, Lee Van Cleef portrays Angel Eyes, a ruthless, sophisticated mercenary who always finishes the job he takes. And it is a fitting t title for this part of the session. Since the release of Windows Server 2016 at Ignite in Atlanta, there has been a, there has been a few bad moments in every S2D admin's eyes ranging from small issues like unhealthy disks due to a node was booted and the IT guy panicking about what's going on to a total outage which might cause a gray hair or two when the users were complaining. One of the first issues I had was using consumer grade SSDs in my servers and at the time there was no mention about this anywhere until I spoke with Dan Lovinger from the storage team who days later wrote about this in a blog posted by Cosmos Darwin saying do not use consumer grade SSDs in storage spaces direct as you need power loss protection aka battery backup on your SSDs in a Windows server when windows server writes to an ssd it requires a safe place to store it without a battery protection the safe place is none and that is pretty pretty slow so for me this resulted in a very slow std server or cluster it didn't result in any uh, storage or any data loss, but it was really, really slow. And the um, developer of virtual machines that was running on this cluster was became very slow and the developers started complaining. Another issue a lot of people have faced and freaked out about, especially when booting a node for the first time or just running get physical disk and they see lost communication on their physical disk. And this is normal when you boot a node or if a node is down, even if you have it in maintenance mode, uh, this will happen. This will, this might lead, this will, this will lead to this getting degraded or incomplete, but they will now say in service if the virtual disk is still operational. 
or you might get the dreaded detached disk ca causing the CSV volume to go offline and in read-only modes and could not be brought online again. Now this could in most cases be fixed by running the data integrity scan for a crash recovery task, which is a scheduled task which you can force to run. Uh, but you have to remove the CSV, the virtual disk as a CSV, and then run the scheduled task on the node where the detached virtual disk was on. And of course, after you remove it from the CSV, you could bring it online as a read only. But this process is slow and takes about one hour per terabyte to use disk. So if you have a, if you have used five terabytes of disk, it will take five hours for the scan to, to complete. And imagine having a 25 terabyte volume with 25 terabyte of storage used. That's going to take you 25 hours. So our, our recommendation is to scope your volumes as small as possible. And if you need bigger, uh, bigger volumes on your virtual machine, spread them out over several uh, cluster shared volumes. And my favorite error combined is removing from pool and transient error. These could be a headache. And I had the removing from pool after removing a node uh, when I first started out with the technical previews. Uh, this was because of Windows not clearing uh, the state of the drives when you were removing a cluster. The transient error is, as it says, a transient error, but it could be, but it could not, it's not, it didn't always clear. So the way to fix it was to remove the physical disk from the pool and adding it back in again, sometimes even using the reset physical disk command um, after the, the disk was removed from the pool. Let's have a look at the ugly stuff. It, it's fitting that a character played by Eli Wallace, Tuco Ramirez, known as the Rat, will, will present these slides, as he's as ugly as he is bad, and have a bizarre sense of humor, just like the ugly stuff I'm about to show you. And it's not for the, it's not for the weak of hearts, that's for sure. So this content is restricted to 18 and above. After about a year in service, there started to come reports of troubling issues after patching with the cumulative updates. Blue screen of death was reported by several MVPs and others. And this is not a really fun screen to get when you're patching and booting a server, and especially if you're booting a server and another server starts blue screening. Luckily, these didn't uh, result in any data loss. Uh, some of these patches were really bad uh, builds by Microsoft. Too fast adaptations of new patches that people were patching days after the re a release of accumulative updates in, of production clusters. This should be done uh, in a test cluster or let somebody with a test cluster do it for you. And some of these bugs were related to driver and firmware from the vendors. When you applied a new cumulative update, the drivers caused or the firmware caused an issue. Or as we've seen lately that backup vendors as well has caused blue screens when upgrading to a new uh, version of the backup software. Or you can have a random bug check out of the blue. And these ones were pretty hard to identify and fix. And you needed to do a memory dump. And most of the time, uh, Premier support was needed uh, to do this. But most of the times, it was just getting your service back up and hope, hoping for a CU. Or, well, a CU would fix the issues you were, you were having. I could go on and on about these issues a lot of people have faced, but I don't want to scare you off too much. 
one of my scariest issues is not related to um, S2D, but happened on an on a two node S2D cluster. I got a call from my old company that their two node was down after they had patched it. This was about four months after I left the company. They had issues getting the cluster to start as when they booted the second node, the cluster service went offline and they couldn't get it up and running again. They had tried every possible scenario by forcing the cluster online, but they hadn't, they, they didn't have any luck. So what I found out was that they had managed to delete the witness share folder for the cluster on a file server. And with a two node, you will not get a quorum without the file share witness. This brings us over to the good stuff. The good stuff named after a character played by Clint Eastwood. Blondie, or the good, good guy he was called, is a confident and merciful bounty hunter with ethics. So going back to the ugly part of a cluster not being able to start up due to a missing witness share and that all other possible ways to bring it up was explored the only option was to remove any cluster features and cluster info on the nodes so the cluster role was removed servers rebooted and the role was added again then the cluster was recreated same name a cluster witness was added and enable cluster std was run and I was crossing my fingers. It reported S2D pool already present and the S2D part was happy. I could see that I had two virtual disks that was supposed to be there and I could add them as storage in the cluster and add them as CSVs. Then it was a matter of importing VMs in Hyper-V Manager and Failover Cluster Manager and everything was back up. When it comes to S2D and resiliency, quite a few of us has beaten it pretty hard, like this two node, no witness patching issue. Another one is from a, from a MVP called Charbel, who about a year ago got a call from a client saying they had a power outage as there was an electrical spark that shorted the PDUs and the power supply. Once they got new power supplies in, they booted the service back up and it kicked off storage repair jobs and they were back up again in 25 minutes after they had powered on the server without any data loss this is how resilient story spaces direct is we have had a total cluster failure and a total power outage and the cluster is back up again by just doing a few simple steps So, going from a down cluster to a total power outage to something more joyful, performance. One of the things S2D can, and that is to perform and sustain high IO. The early numbers I was getting on a Fleabay HP DL380 Gen 6 setup with some Intel 750 NVMEs, Samsung PM863 SSDs and some Western Digital 1 terabyte NAS drives was amazing. I was getting almost 300,000 IOPS out of hardware for about 4,000 US dollars. And most of that cost was the NVMEs and the SSDs. As we were seeing more and more deployment speeds, more, more and more deployment speeds were increasing pretty drastically. This is a data on S2D 3112 setup I did for my former employer in February of 2017. One of the first off the shelf S2T deployments, pretty fast for the price of a spinning rest sand with 951,000 IOPS, where the equivalent SAN would push maybe 100,000 IOPS with SSDs. Then we started getting into the big leaks of performance. 
This is a 5 no Lenovo SR650 deployment, which I did a few months ago with four Intel P4600 3.2 terabyte drives as cache and eight, eight terabyte HDDs pushing nearly well, over 3.3 million IOPS in 100% read. If we go over to 50-50 read-write, we were seeing almost the same performance in read-write combined as we were pushing almost 2.9 million IOPS with it spread 50-50 between reads and writes. Still, we were in the sub millisecond latencies for reads and writes, which is pretty awesome. And this is uh, with about 46% total guest CPU, giving you over 50% um, for the hypervisor for the, ho for the virtual machines. Oh, and if you want it really, really fast, Build a system with Intel Optane DC persistent mem memory and some Optane NVMe cards for capacity. Maybe you can break the IOPS record set at Ignite last year with 13.8 million IOPS from a 12 node cluster. As we count IOPS in millions, let's have a look at upgrading to Windows Server 2019. When it comes to upgrading an S2D cluster to Windows Server 2019, there are two options. You can do the fresh install, which is my favorite, as I think it's the cleanest way of redeploying a node. It will not be burdened by any issues in the previous OS install. The second, which is new this year, and since StorySpace Direct is new, we couldn't upgrade before. We can do an in-place upgrade as well. And this one is fully supported in 2019. This is not my preferred way of doing it, but if it's the only option, then do it. So <clears throat> stay tuned for some blog posts about in-place upgrade in the near fu future. Fresh install is my favorite, as I know what I'm getting. And since I normally do bare metal deployment with Virtual Machine Manager, this is for me the simplest way. So what do you need to do? You need to pause drain the node, remove the node from the cluster, redeploy the node with 2019, get it up to date with cumulative updates, unless you do bare metal deployment, then the cumulative update should be preloaded into the image. You run any pre-scripts to enable all the config needed on the server. Once that is done, add the node back to the cluster. S2D will consume the disks and it will kick off some repairs. Now allow these to finish, then kick off an optimized storage pool for it to balance out the data on the disks. Once that's done, then you can jump over to the next node and repeat the same steps. In-place upgrade is an interesting thing for those wanting to do it. For standalone Hyper-V servers, it's great. And I've upgraded a 2016 standalone to 2019, and it worked really nice. For us to do it might take longer than redeploying, depending on your, your, your setup. The steps for doing this is almost the same. The only difference is that you need to apply the S2D Hyper-V specific config to the node, but do verify that the config is identical. And that's it. It's pretty simple to do an upgrade, but it's highly advisable to have someone that has done this before so that you don't start with this and it fails flat on its ass because you've forgotten something. So thanks for joining. If you need to reach me, you can do so on my blog or on Twitter or on our Story Spaces Direct Slack ch channel. If you are not a member and run an S2D deployment, I urge you to join. This is where you will get the first updates on new patches, bugs, and so on. Thank you.